This is a story of I Want to Hold Your Hand, the song which propelled the Beatles from becoming the biggest selling act in Britain to then totally conquering the United States on the way to becoming a truly global phenomenon. The story starts in September 1963. Paul McCartney was living with Jane Asher and her family at number 57 Wimpole Street, a quiet road in the centre of London, largely populated by professionals. Jane's mother Margaret had a music room in the basement and it was there that John and Paul created I Want to Hold Your Hand. The accounts of both John and Paul agree on how this song was written. Here's John recounting in his 1980 Playboy interview. We wrote a lot of stuff together, one on one, eyeball to eyeball. Like in I Want to Hold Your Hand, I remember when we got the chord that made the song. We were in Jane Ash's house downstairs in the cellar, playing on the piano at the same time. And we had, oh, you ooh, ooh, got that something. And Paul hits this chord and I turn to him and say, that's it. I said, do that again. In those days, we really used to absolutely write like that, both playing into each other's noses. Photographer Robert Freeman, who took the cover photos for With the Beatles and Rubber Soul, lived in a flat above John in Kensington. He tried to educate John in jazz, and John was intrigued by a contemporary French album of experimental music. There was one track where a musical phrase repeated as if the record had stuck. The same effect was used in I Want to Hold Your Hand in the phrase I can't hide, I can't hide, I can't hide. Five days before the song was recorded, the Beatles appeared on the UK's top-rated TV programme Sunday night at the London Palladium with an audience of 25 million people comprising over half of the UK's population. On the 17th of October, the Beatles convened in Studio 2 at EMI Studios in Abbey Road. It was there that both I Want to Hold Your Hand and the UK B-side, This Boy, were recorded in a single day, together with their first fan club Christmas Flexi Disc. The session started at 2.30 and ended at 10pm, including an hour and a half break from 5.30 to 7pm. Each song required 17 takes. Instrumentally, it was amongst their most basic recordings, the song featuring solely three guitars, rhythm, bass and lead, drums, hand claps and vocals. Paul's 1963 Hofner bass featured for the very first time. It was also the first time that the Beatles had four-track recording technology available to them. When listening to all the tapes, McCartney's leadership is apparent even at this early stage of the Beatles' career. For example, at the beginning of Take One, where, when Lennon suggests doing it more slowly, Paul quickly asserts no, shh, and demands a clean beginning, as well as instructing Ringo on the attack needed at the start. George Martin described I Want to Hold Your Hand as the apex of phase one of the Beatles' development. He added, when they started out in the Love Me Do days, they weren't good writers. They stole unashamedly from existing records. It wasn't until they tasted blood and they realised they could do this. And that set them on the road to writing better songs. During the remainder of October, the Beatles embarked on a series of concerts in Sweden, followed by the UK. The venues typically held around 2,000 people, with many locked out due to over-demand. The term Beatlemania was used for the first time, culminating with their performance at the Raw Variety Performance at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London. Following further dates in the UK, the Beatles rounded off 1963 by performing in their very own pantomime in the 3,000-seat Finsbury Park, Astoria. A month later, and in time for the all-important Christmas market, Parlophone released in the UK I Want to Hold Your Hand on the 29th of November. This disc had advanced sales of over 1 million, but did not enter at the top of the British charts because there was a resurgence of interest in She Loves You, which stood in its way. 
It took a further two weeks for I Want to Hold Your Hand to finally dislodge She Loves You from the Top. In the US, Capitol Records had stubbornly resisted EMI and Brian Epstein's demands to release any of the Beatles singles. Instead, they were licensed to small independent labels such as VJ, Swan and Tolly. However, by the end of 63, Capital could no longer turn a blind eye to what was going on in the UK, and I Want to Hold Your Hand became the Beatles' first release on the Capital label on the 26th of December. The US 45 was backed with I Saw Her Standing There, the opening track from the Beatles' first UK album. On the 1st of February 1964, I Want to Hold Your Hand finally topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart, selling 5 million copies in the process. This was a defining turning point for British pop music and spearheaded the launch of the so-called British Invasion of America. At the time, the Beatles were performing 18 days of concerts at the Olympia in Paris. They reluctantly recorded a German language version entitled Komm gib mir deine Hand under pressure from EMI. Then the Beatles celebrated that evening by going to dinner at the George V Hotel with George Martin and Brian Epstein, who made everyone laugh by putting a chamber pot on his head. After returning to London, the next flight would be to JFK in New York. Their subsequent appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show transformed their fortunes, unleashing a series of events which saw the Beatles become the biggest act in the US and then the world. During John Lennon's double fantasy sessions in 1980, engineer Lee DiCario recalls, I remember we were editing something and John was bored, so he went out into the studio, grabbed a Fender Telecaster, plugged it in and sat on the amp all day playing Beatles songs. It was great. You'd walk by and you'd hear him singing and playing, I want to hold your hand. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and want to watch more, please click on the subscribe. It's all free.